And today we'll be focusing on the subject walking grace. And what do we mean by that? We mean this is the grace that enables us to walk a journey with God. Because our relationship with God is, is a journey. He's taking us from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith. Amen. And next week we are also encouraging you to continue to connect because we will be concluding this theme with another interesting subject titled Working Grace. So visit us if you can. Join us online if you are far so that we can conclude this theme together. We are going to jump straight into the word of God in the book of Habakkuk chapter number 3. And we are going to take one verse which is verse number 19. The Bible says the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like the deer's feet. And he will make me walk on my high hills to the chief musician with my stringed instruments. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We pray that you may speak to us. We pray that you may challenge us. We pray that you may renew our minds even through your word, O oh God. We thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. We give you praise. We thank you that the entrance of your word in our hearts brings us light and it brings us understanding. Our lives will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Since you and I, who are born again today, have become children of God, and we have been won by God through His grace or by His grace, so that we could be reconciled with him and have a true and a living relationship with him. And of course, we did emphasize the fact that we didn't have to do anything. God said we needed to come as we are. We were not even supposed to or expected by God to work on our lives, to change our lives so that we can be accepted by him. But God said, come as you are. My grace is sufficient. He said, come as you are. My blood or the blood of Jesus Christ will bring you near and wipe away all of your sins. But now that we are children of God, we are expected by God to change the way we used to walk or behave and walk in a manner that is pleasing before the Lord. That is what God is now expecting. And he has that expectation simply because he is releasing his grace upon our lives so that we can be able to do so. The book of Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse 17 says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind. And that's how you and I used to walk. We used to walk in the futility of our minds. But the scripture here says, we should no longer walk in that manner as the rest of the people out there who do not know the Lord. So at salvation, when we became born again, we received from God a new nature. Yes, Last week we spoke about the old nature that we had, the flesh, the flesh. The carnal nature that was working against us. The sinful nature that did not help us to obey God. But once we are born again, we receive from God a new nature. The nature of Christ. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And what I like from this scripture is that it says we are now new creatures. God has given us a new nature right on the inside of us. He took out that sinful nature. 
and he gave us the nature of Christ, the nature and the character of Christ so that we can be able to walk like him, behave like him, think like him. That's why he has the expectation to walk differently from how we used to walk before. So we are expected, therefore, to walk according to that new nature that we have received. The Bible again says in Romans 6 verse 4, Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death. Because that old sinful nature had to die. And the Bible says, We were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. This new life that we have received from God. This new life that we have received through Christ. The Bible says we need to walk in it. We need to walk it out because walking in the Bible speaks about conduct. It speaks about behavior. The way that we handle ourselves. And the Bible says we need to walk in this newness of life. God is not expecting us to produce new things with our old nature. He has taken away the old nature so that we can walk in the newness of life of life that is how our god is working and many of us we struggle sometimes to please god because we think we, we need to depend on our old self but god says no i've given you a new nature you are now a new creature and you can walk in that newness and not only that then we need to understand that even at this stage of walking our salvation, behaving in a manner that God expects us to behave, even at this stage, the grace of God is still available. It is still sufficient to enable us to walk the way that God wants us to walk, to enable us to do everything that God wants us to do. It is the grace of God through the Holy Spirit that will sustain us on the way. Because as I said that our relationship with God is a journey. Our relationship with God is a journey. We, went, we did not just become born again to be stuck at one place. But we became born again so that we can be set on a journey with God. We can walk with God. So it is the grace of God then through the Holy Spirit that will sustain us on the way and empower us to behave like children of God. Not necessarily so that we can become religious people or pretend to be a good person because that is not God's aim. God did not save us just so that we can attend church regularly. God did not save us just so that we can try doing good things. But God saved us so that he can give us his power and strengthen us to enable us to live like his children. Second Peter chapter number 1 verse 3, the Bible says, As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, so even as we know God and we grow in knowing him and we grow in his grace, the Bible says there is, his, there is his divine power that he has given us in all things that pertain to life and godliness. The kind of life that we are supposed to live. The godly nature and character that we are supposed to show. The Bible says there is that power already by virtue of being a child of God. By virtue of being a born again Christian. The Bible says just by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus gave us the right, the power to become the children of God. So there is that power that rests upon us to enable us to live like the children of God. Hallelujah. Therefore you and I are not supposed to struggle. We are not supposed to wonder how am I going to do this Christian thing? How am I going to become this good person, listen, the Bible says just by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, there is the power that God releases upon your life. And you and I as the children of God, we have that power. We have received it when the Holy Spirit came upon us. In Acts chapter number 1 verse 8, the Bible says, 
But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So there is that power that God releases upon us. You know, when we trace back how even the disciples got saved and how they were empowered by God, we realize that at their conversion, yes, the Lord Jesus Christ breathed into them his spirit so that they can become born again and receive this new, new nature that we are talking about. But after that, he, he told them to go and tarry in Jerusalem until they are endowed with power from on high. Because Jesus realized that they are going to need the supernatural power of God to help them in their journey, in their walk with God. Because it was not an end for them to be saved, for Jesus to be raised from the dead and to be saved. It was not an end, but it was a beginning of their journey. Remember we said it is the same spirit that continues to dispense the grace of God in us. And we said the grace of God is that divine enablement. So that's why then the Spirit of God gives us that power to become the children of God. So that even when we cannot do it or make it on our own, when we are tired on the way, the grace of God will be sufficient for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. I love it because the word teaches us that it is the grace of God that brings us salvation. But again, it is the grace of God that teaches us to live godly lives. So not only does he win us or bring us closer to him, but God coaches us through the grace that is dispensed by the Holy Spirit. So that even as we understand Everything that pertains to godliness, we can also have the power to execute it, to live it out, to apply it in our lives. You know, when we are being taught in schools, in universities, we are being given informa information without power to go and apply that information. But the difference here with the grace of God is that we are taught principles and not only that, but we are also given the power. We are enabled. If it is the grace of God that teaches us, then we are going to tap into the power to apply the very same things that God is teaching us. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Titus chapter number 2 verse 11. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. So therefore the grace of God needs to appear as you grow in the grace of God. It needs to appear even to us. And then in verse 12, it says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. It is the grace of God that teaches us. We, we, we don't have to struggle with this, that even when we are listening to the word of God at church, we need to open ourselves up to the grace of God. To teach us. We are not just going to depend on the, on the reading of the scriptures, the sermons that are preached. But we need to be open to the spirit of God so that he can release his grace. So that we can learn how to live godly lives. And this can only be possible through the ministry and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. John 14 verse 26 says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, I love it. It calls him the helper. He's here with us to help us. So when we are born again, we are not alone. We have a helper by our side. Who is there, who is here not to condemn us, not to judge us, not to make us feel bad about ourselves all the time, but to help us as he convicts us. He helps us to come back to our senses. He helps us to do the right thing. He helps us to make the right choices. It says, whom the Father will send in my name. Listen to this. He will teach you all things. And bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So everything that the Lord Jesus Christ teaches us, sometimes we'll forget, yes, and the messages we are hearing from church, we hear them, we get excited when we walk out, sometimes we forget. But the Spirit of God goes with us. And that's why we were encouraging that we need to develop that relationship with the Holy Spirit, fellowship with Him. So that in certain times when we have forgotten certain things, He will bring them to remembrance. And not only bring them to remembrance, but teach them, teach, teach us how to apply all of those things and help us to apply, to apply those things. And, and the very same 
power of the Holy Spirit, which the Bible calls the anointing, is available to continue to teach us everything that we need to do. The book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 27 says, But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. That is the job of the anointing. That is the job of the supernatural power of the spirit of God to teach us how to live godly lives. To teach us how to live like the children of God. To teach us how to think like the children of God. And I believe that you and I are going to conquer if we are going to live our lives in such a manner. You know, in our journey with God, there are a lot of steps that we are supposed to take in this walk of life, in this walk with God. There is a lot of ground to cover. And I just want to show you the vastness of this journey that we need to travel, you and I. And that's why we need the Word of God. Of course, the Bible tells us that in the book of Psalms 33, 37 and verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. That is how God leads us in his way. That's why we need the grace of God. You will see just now how God is expecting us to walk as the children of God. The Bible says, in the book of Genesis chapter number 17 verse 1, it actually speaks about walking before God and being blameless. Again, the Bible speaks about how we are supposed to walk in God's ordinance and judgments according to Leviticus chapter 18 verse 4. We are supposed to walk in God's statutes according to Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 3. We are supposed to walk in God's ways according to Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 33. We are supposed to walk after God according to Deuteronomy chapter 13 and verse 4. We are supposed to walk about Zion according to Psalm 48 and verse 12, which is the church of Jesus Christ. We are expected to walk uprightly according to Psalm 84 and verse 11. We are supposed to walk in his truth according to Psalm 86 and verse 11. We are supposed to walk in the law of the Lord according to Psalm 119 and verse 1. We are supposed to walk prudently according to Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 1. We are supposed to walk in the spirit according to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. We are supposed to walk by faith according to 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7. We are supposed to walk in love according to Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse 2. We are supposed to walk as the children of the light according to Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse 8. We are supposed to walk circumspectly according to Ephesians 5 and verse 15. We are supposed to walk by the same rule according to Philippians chapter 3 and verse 16. We are supposed to uh, walk in the newness of life according to Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. We are supposed to walk properly according to Romans chapter 13 and verse 13. We are supposed to walk according to your portion or our portion as bestowed by the Lord upon our lives according to 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 17. We are supposed to walk worthy of our calling according to Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse 1. As you can realize, there's a lot of ground to cover. This journey can be very tiring. Our walk with God can be very tiring. To be able to memorize all of this and try to work it out in our lives for ourselves and try so hard to apply it in our lives to remember all of the details that I'm supposed to walk like this, walk like this. It can be an almost impossible task. That's why we need the help of the Holy Spirit. That's why we need the grace of God, the grace to walk, walking grace, the grace that is going to empower us, the grace that is going to enable us to walk the way that God wants us to walk. That's why God orders our steps. And that's why many of us on this journey, we get tired. We get exhausted. I've seen many people in their walk with God. They get excited in the beginning. They get so happy. They are fired up. But at some point, we forget that it was all by the grace of God. We came to God by His grace. And sometimes we try to work this thing, leaving God behind, leaving the Spirit of God behind. 
And I've seen many people fall by the wayside, becoming weary, becoming tired. Because let's be honest, this Christianity journey, this Christianity uh, walk can be tiring, can be exhausting. Because it's one and the same thing. Many of us, church life is almost the same routine every week. And if we are not sustained by the grace of God, we can be easily tired. That's why then, in the scripture that we have read as we prepare to close, in Habakkuk 3.19, our opening scripture, the Bible promises us, actually this is Habakkuk's prayer. He said, the Lord God is my strength. Listen to this. He will make my feet like deer's feet. And he will make me walk on my high heels. And I'm sure this is exciting even for the ladies. Yeah. You know, God will help them walk on their high heels. We see how sometimes it can be so tiring and difficult. They wear the, they wear the high heels just for two hours and at some point they are tired. But the Bible promises us that God will give us the strength. He will make us to walk on our high heels. All of us, our journeys are not the same. There are hills we are climbing from time to time, even in our nation at this point. There are hills that we are climbing. And God, this is a very steep and a high hill. But God says, do not be weary, do not be tired. I will give you the strength and you will climb that hill and you will get to the top where you are going to celebrate the victory. And, and even in our nation right now, we are being sustained by the grace of God in our walk. Amen. The Bible tells us, in the book of Isaiah 40 and verse 31, listen to this. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. This is the part I like. They shall walk and not faint. Why? Because these are the people who wait on the Lord. These are the people who depend on the Holy Spirit. These are the people who depend on the grace of God. Because as we have said in 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Listen, His grace is sufficient for all of us. In our walk with Him, in our journey with Him, His grace is sufficient. I love this scripture, Proverbs 4. Verse 12, it says, when you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you will not stumble. This is a promise for all of us as the children of God. The Bible tells us that when we walk, our steps will not be hindered. How? It is only possible when we depend on Him. When we lean on His grace. When we allow Him, our God, to strengthen us each and every day. When we feel tired, we need to run back to Him. Let me close with this scripture. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, I think it's chapter 5 and verse 24, it speaks about Enoch. It says, Enoch walked with God and he was not. Why? For God took him. And this picture reminds me of, and many of you I know that you have read this beautiful piece where this man was talking about how he was walking on a sand with two sets of print, footprints. And at some point, only one set remained. And he started praying and asking God, where are you? And God said, look, this is the time where I am carrying you. The prints that you are seeing are actually my prints. And this is the same picture that this scripture draws for us. That when Enoch walked with God, God took him. He carried him. God walked on his behalf so that when he was tired, when he was weary in this life, and this is your portion as a child of God, that when you lean on him, God will carry you. God will pick you up. And it will be as if you, are, you no longer exist. It will, it will be as if we can't see you in certain places anymore. Why? Because God's grace is sustaining you. And this is our portion. As the children of God. And may I declare child of God upon your life. That you will walk this journey. And you will be prosperous in this journey. And you will not fail in this journey. You will not be tired. You will not be faint. At your weakest point. God, God's presence and God's power. 
will come and refresh you. God will come and strengthen you. God will come and lift you up. Let us pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your grace that is sufficient for each and every one of us. We thank you for the grace to walk this journey with you, Lord. We thank you that, oh Father, even this day, every ground that we need to cover as we walk with you, Lord, we are not going to do it by our own strength and power, but we are going to do it by your grace, oh Father. All of the destinies we are supposed to reach, all of the levels that we are supposed to reach, oh God, all of the places we are supposed to go to, Lord, you will take us there. You will equip us. You will empower us, Lord. We give you praise that, oh Father, we will not even walk the way that we used to walk before, before we met you, Lord. But, oh Master, we thank you that we are going to conduct ourselves in a different way. Not because, Master, we are able with our own strength, but because your grace is at work in our lives. Father, we give you praise. And we thank you that even on this journey ahead of us to rebuild our lives, to rebuild this nation, to rebuild in different nations of this world. Lord, your grace is still sufficient. We give you praise. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And we just want to challenge you who is watching from home. Maybe you are sitting there and you are wondering, how am I going to become a Christian and be a successful Christian, let me tell you this, it's all by the grace of God. Many people are afraid to give their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ because they wonder, how are we going to do it? How can I be such a good person? Listen, you don't have to depend on your own strength and power. The grace of God is available. So I'm challenging you today to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And I'm asking you from wherever you are to pray this prayer after me and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you today for your word. I come to you, Lord, and I surrender my life. I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that you died for my sins and you rose again. I ask you today, forgive me for all of my sins and wash me with your precious blood. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make me a new creature and a child of God. I thank you, Father, for my salvation and for my deliverance. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much for praying that prayer. Please take note of all of the information you are going to be given right after this experience. Please, let's keep in touch. Let's be connected so that we can walk this journey together with you, to help you, to coach you, and just to show you that it is possible to have a meaningful relationship with God.